Happy Humber Wednesday. So in the spirit of the, I don't know, what do you say, time of the year, I'm wearing my homebrew Star Wars themed shirt. Guess who has tickets for this weekend, opening weekend? Yeah, this guy here. This guy, this guy here has tickets. So uh, <clears throat> I missed out on last weekend's uh, tribute uh, brew to Paul Wicksteed. I did a double week uh, weekend brew the weekend before, so uh, my wife wasn't about to uh, allow me to take a whole another weekend. So um, compromise is I think this coming Monday, next Monday, um, I'm gonna do. I'll have the day off, so I'm gonna go pick up the ingredients and I'm gonna do the paint head supercharger. But uh, I haven't actually went through everyone's videos yet. I saw some, some emails coming in where some folks updating some videos. So uh, I know I have a lot of footage to enjoy this week. And uh, uh, if anybody made any mistakes out there, hopefully I'll, I'll pick up on the mistakes and uh, you know be able to uh, square that away. Uh, what else? Anything else? Uh, uh, let's see. So I had finished the double IPA uh, old school uh, what a Friday a week ago, um, I fermented for about a week, and I ended up with uh, a gravity reading. My original gravity was 1076. I ended up with 1016 after seven days. That's about 7.9%. Um, the first batch of old school was 8.7. I'm still, at, you know, it's still bubbling away. Um, the, uh, both the old school IPA uh, the Old School Double IPA and the uh, Punch and Judy version 4, I used uh, two different plastic buckets. I used the kind of the shorter wine, 5-gallon or 6-gallon plastic bucket, uh, which generally works okay because they have the rubber gaskets on the insides of the lid. I don't know if I can show you one of those. Um, let's see. See how... On the uh, on the wines, they have this little black rubber gasket on the inside. Uh, the other lids for the for, for the narrower five gallons don't seem to have these these uh, plastic or these uh, black rubber gaskets in them. And I'm finding that um, <clears throat> you know for a while I've been thinking that there wasn't any fermentation going on because there wasn't any bubbles. Well, now I'm finding out that you know it's a weak seal. So the reason I found out is because um, I, I got a lot of volume in these two buckets. I got well over five and a half. I got like six and a half, almost seven gallons in the buckets. And when I put the top, when I put pitched the yeast and put the tops on both the old school on Friday uh, and then a, a week ago Friday and then the uh, ESB on Saturday, um, they were they were pretty damn full. So I pitched the yeast. And I didn't put blow-off tubes, I should have, uh, because in about, I don't know, 12 hours, the airlock for the double, uh, uh, for the double IPA had already blown over, and I had to put on a, a, a blow-off tube on that one. Uh, the ESB uh, took a little bit longer, but then it caught up, and, and it went nuts, too, and, uh, you know, it, it actually... Uh, it blew up pretty good. It, it didn't blow up. It, it shot out the, the air tube uh, or out the uh, airlock and then I had to put the uh, blow-off tube on. And then I started noticing that instead of going out the blow-off tube, some of it was, but most of it was going out the the sides of the, the, sides of the bucket. Uh, but after seven days of fermenting on the ESB, it too was 1016 and it's not going to go any further. So I think I end up at uh, starting gravity was 1069 for the ESB. Final gravity was 1016. That puts me at 6.7% for the ESB. That's, that's, that's great. I'm happy with that. Um, the double IPA, though, um, I after seven days, I checked the gravity. Like I said, it was 1016 from uh, 1076. So that puts it at 79 but it wasn't done. It was still it still had a Krausen on it when I opened it up and took the gravity. So I uh, took some some uh, weighted hops. I took uh, two ounces of citra, broke it down into four muslin bags, and put some marbles in there, uh, some uh, to, to uh, weight it down so I could get more exposure. Last time I put in a you know I think I, last time I just put them in there uh, you know open without any muslin bag and ended up with a lot of uh, losing a lot of volume. So this time I, I put it into four bags to expose. To expose more of the hops, 
Uh, so I'll let that dry hop for, for uh, five days, uh, five, six days, maybe six days. Um, then, uh, you know, go start cold crashing it and throw some gelatin in. Anyway, I I'm going to really spend a lot of time with these to get the clarity just right. And hopefully I have some, some bottles ready to go uh, by next Tuesday. Yeah, by uh, next Tuesday. So anyway, that's what I got going on. Um, just catching up on brewing. This coming Monday uh, on the 22nd, I will do the Paul Wicksteed um, uh, brew. And uh, I'm going to do the Panhead Supercharger. Um, I have to you know, mix up the ingredients a little bit, but we do have Pacific, Pacific Jade hops, which is, which is good. Um, so I'll have to kind of figure out the, the toffee and all that. I saw Tony H did some, some variations on it, so I'll kind of follow suit there. But uh, anyway, looking forward to seeing all your, all your videos. And uh, uh, oh, I did, I did some uh, on the, uh, is it the e yeah, on the ESB, when I pulled that out, I, I, I uh, cold crashed that. You'll see some video uh, in a bit. Here is my extra special bitter. I dropped the, uh, let's see, I fermented for about a week from Saturday to Saturday, and I put some gelatin in it yesterday after cold crashing it for 24 hours, and can't see the color, but it's just looking pretty nice. And these are some bottles of some uh, cum laude Vienna ale that I bottled up that will be heading out to some folks shortly and that's just a really good idea. Uh, you'll see the the ESB sitting in the in the carboy and I've already cold crashed it for a day or two and added gelatin. It's already pretty clear. I'm gonna let it go for another day or two before I carb it up and and put it in there. Uh, but I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, oh well the yeast from the from the ESB I put that in a in a uh, ball jar or I washed it and uh, and uh, so I've I've reclaimed that yeast forgot to show you the yeast that I washed. There is that. I'll do another ESB uh, here in another another week or so. Uh, so I'll have plenty of that over the holidays. But I'm looking to get a lot of the stuff bottled and send out some beer mails a lot of you guys. And, uh, you know, anyway, uh, I'm... I'm I'm feeling a bit like Santa Claus right now. So uh, here I have some uh, uh, Sculpin, uh, Ballast Point Sculpin. Uh, it's going down exceptionally smooth tonight. I had, had a weird morning. I get, I get on the Metro this morning, which is, you know, some of you don't ride the Metro. It's kind of the, the above ground subway here in D.C. And there's this crazy woman. Um, she looks like Whoopi Goldberg. And she's shooting, or she's trying to shoot fire out of her fingertips at me because I'm an evil man that's feeding bad thoughts through my cell phone into her head, um, making her fat and disgusting. And I can't remember all the other stuff she said, but she was cussing and yelling, and and she was doing this kind of Doctor Strange thing with her fingers, trying to shoot uh, uh, fire at me and and catch my body on fire. This was about five stops on the metro, all the way from my house to where I work, and. Uh, that was the way I started off this morning. So I, the way I see it, I enjoyed me a nice, uh, I earned me a nice uh, sculpin here at the end of the day uh, for all the craziness that I had to deal with this morning. So, cheers. Uh, well, hopefully you guys are able to get some tickets to go see the show. And may the force be with you. And I look forward to seeing all your uh, Homebrew Wednesday videos. Uh, have yourself a happy homebrew and have a happy homebrew Wednesday. Dean out.